they they know how to make products, man. What's up, man? Yeah, you guys just want to have a seat. It's just literally recording a conversation, so. All right. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So I was, um, I was 11 when you started the, when you started the company. But you were, you're, I mean, yeah. but you are not that much older. Cancel like, spirit. Why older. would I want like, a crazy what, thing like that? What is the, like, take me all the way back. <laughs> I guess to the, that's like, true. Take, yeah. yeah, take me all the way back to the, like, the moment where you're like, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, Luke yeah, Smith, yeah. you couldn't there, brush there's your hair? Fun, there's a funny thing for like a lot of my life. Goodness. When people would ask me, you know, like, how did the, how did this start? I'd be like, I don't know, it was kind of weird. I just like started making I can't games and game. it seemed like it was <laughs> fun and I kept doing it. And when I, when I really started thinking back to my childhood, like I've been, I've been obsessed with how like rules can change human behavior and how you can all agree to play a card game by a certain set of rules. And, you know, the, you know, the adults that I was observing, you know, as a kid would, they could play cards all night and laugh and, you know, interact in whatever way that they did. And yet you could take a different set of rules. For example, a set of rules that a five-year-old made with the best of intentions. And the adults would like nod and laugh, but they would only play that game for, you know, three minutes. <laughs> He old. <laughs> and he is. Like that is like always fascinated me. And I and I realized God, that looking Smith back is like, on shut it, up. I've been Just doing shut that. Up. He's given them you know, that my look. whole life. And it like irritated my friends and they didn't want to play. I mean, because you, we start as a game designer and you suck. Like you're terrible. Like your games are are a horror. I mean, they're not even games. They're just. It, I mean, it's almost. You're just like a little tyrant trying to get people to do things. He and wanted this. Did he? I remember like building. I probably spent Did like he? weeks building this like really complex. <laughs> uh, pen and paper adventure game on index cards. And I'd like drawn pictures of monsters and everything like this. And I remember finally wow. getting, you know, a friend to play it at school. And it was like the first dice roll, like some creature like killed his character or something. It was just like the, the worst possible, you know, like outcome. And I was like, I mean, I was like in fourth grade or something, but some kids look at the garbage truck and are like that big powerful machine. Like that's what I want to be. But to me, it was the, the deck of cards. Like, I want to know how to control that. Like, that, like, power to build an experience that when people come into it, they, you know, they, they leave with a smile on their face or more connected to the that's people around them. That's an interesting way yeah, to look at it. I've been doing that game design. forever. It's kind, of, it's kind of crazy. Way before, cool way before way computers. And then, of course, I like right, I saw games on computers, and I was like, wow. <laughs> my, my perception, you know, based on all of our time together, has actually been, has been, like, you are more interested in the making of them there we go. in a bunch of ways <laughs> than playing them. Blow like, up, blow playing games is like a, it's not an explicit hobby of yours. Like you, like you're educating yourself. It's, it's more, it's more work, but it's like, you're like, you're always yeah. making stuff. Yeah. I think this is true. And I like, I feel a little bit like guilty about it sometimes because I think it is the most dangerous thing as a designer to enjoy the making more than the playing. Right. Because the number of things you can enjoy making is, infinitely larger than the number of things that, <laughs> that you can enjoy playing, right? Much less other people can enjoy playing. And so, yeah, what you say is true. And I, and I feel like it's sort of like an addiction that I've had to fight so that I make things that are worthwhile. Cause I mean, cause it's, you know, the whole shtick to me is about, you know, touching other people like somehow. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about kind of the, the origin. God, I'm going to jump ahead again. My dude. I'm going to jump to my life, 2004. I remember I finished the campaign Poor for guy. Halo 2, and, and my friends and I got distracted a bunch by the multiplayer, and I finished it the same night I finished Metal Gear 3. And after I finished both of those games, I went and watched this Vi Doc, mm. the, the, the documentary. That, like, I look, I, I look at now, and I yeah, met a bunch of y'all, and I, I'm like, oh, I didn't pick up on all the, like, human suffering <laughs> in, this, in this documentary the first time, the first time I watched it. <laughs> oh, what's he busting out? Do I get to sign your? Uh, no. Do you remember? Copy? Do you remember this? I looked for it actually before I came in today. I, I don't. I don't think I have it anymore. You don't? Yeah. No. I remember the sweatshirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah the so this was this. Yeah. This. This is the. This is. The, what is this from? <laughs> like, what is this actually? I have like one of this. That, like, that's what supposed is to be this? the marathon logo. I think. <laughs> it was just Isn't like that? what? The, the... Yeah. I. It, it's. It said Osiris on it. I thought it looked cool, and yeah, I bought it. I have no idea. I sadly. Right. Yeah, I, I have no idea what it was. Yeah, I still, to this day, I literally, 
I remember the sweatshirt, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is the moment. This is this moment that I became like aware that humans make these things because otherwise it was like magic, right? Like, the, yeah, like right. there's nothing yeah. in like there's nothing in 2004 about look at these developers making stuff that you care about. It, that's not like there wasn't really much of like the internet sucked too. Like you didn't have like <laughs> look you can access these people and none of that. It was a totally different time. So I'm watching this this documentary and and, and you, this dude shows up and so the paraphrase is like you know um it's like the cynical gamers who something doesn't grab us in five minutes you know we're gonna we're gonna turn it off and it was like i was like oh my god it's like i was spoke to and i have like no like i'm like an english degree I'm like i can't make games i couldn't write any pro like couldn't write code or anything i just remember i remember feeling as a as a as like a player like super duper spoke to in in that moment and so we come out of the the building a game like building it by yourself and talk now about like the, the team has changed. Like building teams has changed. Like the way you think about building teams has changed. The way Bun like in the however many years I've been at Bungie now, in the fifth, like the way the company approaches building teams have changed. Let's go all the way back hmm. to, to Halo 2. Like building the team for Halo 1 and they're, Halo 2. They're humanizing <laughs> themselves. <laughs> yeah, I mean I they're making I think, us sympathize if, for them. Like past Jason was here, he would I mean, yeah, he would at disagree the end of the day, of stuff, yeah, there's people I, behind these games. Say, but I, I think compared to the intentionality games, that we there's there's just so know, much try work sometimes to be done exhibit when making you know, know games, we should have especially about, a game like this, you know, about building teams and how important a game teams that are. Has such Back immense then, support it was almost just this a you know snowball that was rolling nuts. downhill of people who you know liked our games and came to the company, and you know then you know it, it snowball rolled a little faster, and it was. Yeah, it was just a bunch of people trying to do their best, trying to recreate the feelings that they had, you know, when they played when they played games. And you can get pretty far on on passion and and talent, but it sometimes makes things really, yeah, really hard when you're not being thoughtful about the organization of the team, the design of the product relative to the resources and time you have. And <laughs> yeah, it made Halo 2 super challenging for a bunch of reasons. But he said Halo. Yeah, he said I Halo. Know. I guess that's I'm, yeah. And and past Jason would would tell me like you're an idiot. We were thinking about all that stuff. You just had to learn. But like means, when I look back, like he means, wasn't thinking about that stuff. That means <laughs> you know. Oh my god. What was he thinking that means about? Halo Destiny. I mean, he was just thinking crossover about the game. Confirm. But I, I mean, I don't know. I always think. I mean, I think my past self is like not really that sharp because I. If they say again, Halo every year. We've seven hundred and seventy-seven so times. I, I then I it's confirmed. And so I look back and I think that you know that guy must be. That guy must be an idiot. Because <laughs> look, look, look at all the stuff I learned just this year. We get ice Halo cream. Like, I, didn't, I, I didn't know anything. But yes. I go back and, yeah, I found one of we the We need to make a Halo counter. Halo 1. How, much, how many times they like, say that Halo? That guy wasn't an idiot. Like, I mean, there's stuff that Because I, know, he didn't I really know, love ice cream but, now. Um, there's a lot of like super interesting exploration and thought and like possibilities that you know didn't end up at the game in there. And... Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know what to make of that because I feel. I feel like I've learned so much, but when I go back, I'm. I'm sort of like blown away by, you know what. Yeah, Mez. what was what was happening in in my mind. Um, I got a very angry cat. Yeah. What's up, buddy? It's pretty embarrassing when I think about like the. I mean, I think about my life in terms of decades and like what's the what are like the big lessons from the the decades. And as I when I like articulate one of the like a, a lesson from my thirties, it's like so embarrassing. I can't find my wallet. <laughs> You gotta get oh, ready. Man. You gotta keep those hands. I mean, I really started. Keep your yeah, wallet I handy. Destiny. Keep your wallet one, handy. Not understanding. So you could throw it at the screen the when it's ready. The value of having at least somebody on the on, you know on the team who totally cares not buying more stuff? than anybody else about. Oh, no, Jaybird, what are you yeah, buying? What, what the team is missing. What the are you team telling me that there's stuff already on the Bungie on the store? Team isn't talking to each other. Where on the team is our our dreams incompatible with the calendar or our dreams in incompatible with our ability oh. or our dreams incompatible with the hardware it's gonna open that we today. need to run on. Um, and I saw production yeah. as, you know, a calendar and a schedule. Um, and I see a it's little true bit of it that a schedule is a thing that you use to sort of test people's understanding of reality in the sense of, you know, can the things we want to do fit in the time that we think we have and how are we tracking against that? But I saw it as like an end in itself. And of course it irritated me and I, you know, didn't pay attention to it. But God, like embracing all that stuff is a thing that will be, yeah, front and center in Memorize anything your credit card I do. Numbers. What do yeah, you do? Anything I do in the future. I think nope. it's making sure 
everyone on the team has an objective understanding of reality and doing anything. So then you what can the heck are you buying, Jaybird? To fix it when that is. You isn't buying true. Halo merch? I didn't understand that. Marathon merch? Oh. When I started Destiny One. Destiny One made me understand that. <laughs> so what I want to talk about now is where computers were heading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's it, where's it going? <laughs> wow, what a question. <laughs> Luke Smith, you're AR good. is going to be the thing that displaces mobile. Like I'm so, I'm so sure of that. I'm so sure we're all going to be wearing glasses, and all the TVs are going to go in a landfill. All those companies are going to go into business. All the cracks in our ceiling are going to get fixed in our glasses. Like so many people are going to end up with virtual pets and windows out to the Taj Mahal or the Eiffel Tower, and maybe it, maybe it'll be maybe it'll be 20 years. Like I think it's going to be a lot sooner than that, and I and I think it's going to be really interesting. And when Definitely it happens, Destiny stuff? like the reason hey, man, that you're going to know share. it's going to take over the whole world. Post it in the Discord. What you buying? Like everybody's going to think it's ridiculous. When the, when the when the iPhone, you know, came out, the stuff people were saying to like not admit that they were holding like a, you know, chunk of the sun in their hands that was going to change the world. Like the stuff people said was ridiculous. And, and people are going to do that again. And the other interesting thing about AR is if you have AR, you have to have local compute because you need high frame rate. You need to be able to render all kinds of crazy stuff like right there, like, you know, within two feet of your body. Yeah, which means oh, I think the, all the cloud oh, computing stuff totally going to happen, absolutely going to be a thing. Um, but we're not going to transition fully to, you know, thin, thin client. But yeah, those those would my, be my two predictions. Local compute never goes away. AR displaces mobile, like hundred hundred percent. So I don't love enough AR to displace. Everything. How are we gonna get ready for that? <laughs> we got we got it's, uh, yeah, like the you know. So so it, yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a great question, and I I I think I think the answer is like we are we already are. Like I I don't think what's gonna happen is there's going to be a whole new slew of games that can only happen in AR. I mean, there's definitely going to be some, but I think in a lot of cases, what's going to happen is people are going to yeah, throw away their TV and have a way bigger TV, or they're going to go to a totally virtual space that has a bigger you know, screen. And they might play some tabletop or strategy games in a different way, but I, I think people are always going to be playing first-person shooters you know, with some kind of input device on like a virtual, uh, you know, window in their visual field. And so I think a bunch of the stuff I that don't we're want the great at it's just impulse buy. Has that been posted anywhere? Yeah, get tipped over by this. The collector's edition at. of this all game? Right, so let's go all, all the way back. I don't think so, right? I haven't been Bungie on Reddit games. yet this morning. <laughs> Someday. Not the company's still there, but I think a lot about my life through the lens of what would go on my tombstone. I just do. I think it's like... I think it's I think it's so I think it's like completely busted. I don't think it's like a, a thing a normal like reasonably sane human being would do, but I think it's a simple way of summarizing your existence and it's the acknowledgement that it, that these existences sometimes come to an end. The question I want to ask three is minutes? about Bungie's <laughs> epitaph. Like the like what is that what is that simple what are you distillation buying? of what I'm so Bungie curious. Is? Tell me. The Tell me. The distillation. I was on the 271 coming back across the bridge home yeah, you know, one night on the bus, and these two guys in in front of me were talking. You know, at first about college, like they were they were they were older, but they'd obviously like gone to college together, and I think they worked together. And at some point, they started talking about Halo, and I think it was Halo Two for them. It's two and more times they said Halo. They weren't really talking about how much Halo meant to them. They were Three talking about. And they weren't really talking about how much they meant to each other, but that's what they were doing is they were sharing those stories of, you know, where they were and what they were doing and how they were, how they were feeling. And, you know, that, that moment, you know, that's like still the keeping me going. Bungie I mean, that, store? that might fuel me for the rest of my life. And it's not the Bungie only store time that's slash happened, back door. but you get a few of those and, you know, that's I'm all in. I want. It's just. You people got sharing it? Uh -oh. memories in a what in did you end up getting? that you know wouldn't have existed without you know you bleeding buckets of blood into the you know whatever code or design or something like that that's what yeah two people having an experience that they wouldn't have had um you know if you hadn't created 
yeah, what you created, like that's, I don't know, that's what matters. That's what matters to me. We're done. Nothing, just trolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Oh. We're just going right into like the trailer, huh? Is what I brought you here to see. Beyond light! Stasis is just a tool. He doesn't it's even play the game video, anymore. <laughs> that was the sickest thing I've ever seen. Mm. I'm in space! I remember that moment. It's freaking Aldrin! Bow. No. Whoa. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, holy Well, she almost cursed. Baby. Oh. I'm gonna shoot you with six anarchies. You're gonna sprint at that Gorgon. Run, run, just be a little doodle. Run, run. Interesting. I think they recreated it. Oh my god! Ah! Ah! It me? <laughs> Getting hype. I know, I know. I can't, I can't. Let me. Let me help me. I don't want to get hype. Welcome, Guardians. This year, we're celebrating our journey with you. Whether you joined no. us 30 years ago, or if it just started today. Watching the thing on stream. This game is in our blood. The Destiny team is full of Destiny fans. Folks who came here because Destiny was their favorite hobby. Folks who log out from work in the evening and log in to play with their clan. The team we have today is committed to relentlessly upgrading this game that we all love. Okay, we aren't happy captions. with just another mission. Instead, we want to push the limit of quality you can expect in an action MMO with That's uniquely destiny experiences like Expunge and Presage. We are committed to delivering the best mission content that you can play in any game with a friend and having the best feeling action game, period. I mean, and this shows through in the passion that we Lammy, see for Larry. Destiny 2. Since we declared independence two years ago, the Destiny community has grown by over 20 million new players. And it continues to grow faster than we ever could have predicted. We're grateful to be a part of this amazing growing community that you all have created. You represent Destiny. You help make it better every year, and you are so welcoming and supportive of every new guardian that sets foot in the tower. And only a handful of us are gonna be up here today. Most of them are in their homes, at their desks, cat. working hard to bring the next part of Destiny to life. There it's a, a huge honor representing such an incredible team and introducing the next chapter of Destiny 2. So, without further ado, this is the Witch Queen. Damn, that soundtrack got really wombly. <gasps> Truth is a funny thing. Does it live in the world? Or in the mind? Is it constant? Or can it be bent? <laughs> universe of light and dark there is no greater power tell me little lights what is your truth now oh wait what what are those what are what is hold on Wait, did the Hive figure out how to make their own, like, undead guardians? Like, Hive guardians? Oh my god! Damn it! I'm hype! 
Damn it! Oh, oh my god, James. Sapathun is serious. I think she's the most dangerous villain we've faced yet. Seven years we've been building up to this moment, and she is finally stepping into the spotlight she and has showing a us ghost? who she really is. What we know about light and darkness is proving to be way more complex than what we previously thought. There are so many lies, truths, and revelations that we're going to get to in The Witch Queen and the year leading up to it. I mean, we're paying off these narrative threads that go all the way back to Destiny's origins, and we're supporting it with the best content that Destiny has to offer. Definitely, and we've got a lot of awesome content to show today. Heck. Let's start with the most mysterious destination yet. Yeah. Sabathun's Throne World. This is an uncharted wonderland of secrets and lies. It's this place that she's created in her own image, this surreal and majestic light-blessed world. She has this castle that she rules from. It overlooks this dark, swampy underbelly with this lone pyramid ship out there. It's oh. the future world she wanted to create built atop the darkness that she left behind. In Throne Worlds, they're a deep part of Destiny lore. Powerful entities create these pocket universes, and when we're there, we have to play by their rules. But now, Yo, is our that own light powers are being used against us. I mean, she has this whole army of hive that she's ascended to the light and brought along with her. These That's are the so hive dope. guardians, and they are the backbone of her new army. Hive guardians? We've talked a lot. Let's show a little. Let's take the first ever look at the Witch Queen gameplay. Oh my, damn it. Savathun, the Witch Queen. Hive God of cunning and lies. After the death of her brother, Oryx. I miss him. Savathun went into hiding. Not out of fear, of course. But out of strategy. <laughs> In her greatest trick yet. The weed sword! Stealing our most sacred resource. The one thing we thought she could never touch. The light. Wow! Look at that! Oh my god, it could do a blade rush! I hope this is a new PvP mode. I hope it's a new PvP mode as well. That spear, it shot a laser! Oh my god! Oh my god, we're gonna have to kill ghosts! No! I cannot wait just to reach out and just crush a hive ghost in my hand. Yeah, I mean, we've been defined by the light for so long. Oh this is uncharted God. territory for no. us. I mean, we're in strange new places. Like, the throne world, it's nice. haunting, but it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. There's a lot to love. There's a few there's, things we saw in the trailer that we haven't talked about yet. Sabathun and her lucent brood. This is the biggest threat Guardians have faced lucent yet. Brood. So we need to find new weapons to match their power. Look at that spear! The glaive. I love this thing. It's brutal and elegant. Oh, it's this the glaive. new energy weapon with melee abilities, mid-range projectiles, energy and weapon? defensive capabilities. It's our first ever first-person melee weapon, and it is such an awesome tool for the battlefield. Ow. The glaive feels so It sounds good. like a shotgun! Just <laughs> jump in and unleash these brutal melee combos and transition right to an energy blast. Yeah, that's a shotgun it's noise. It's really powerful and has a lot of utility. So, we've told you about what the glaive can do. Now let's talk about how you're going to get your hands on one. These weapons don't come out of chest yeah, at the end of missions. Biggest threat. And you're not going to find it off your one bingo. You should have made a bingo card. Your first this glaive is, like is humanity's not going to like biggest threat. It's going to be built. Yes, weapon crafting is coming to Destiny 2. Hmm. Now, chasing weapons has been an integral part of the Destiny Pursuit game since the beginning. And over the years, we've added more deterministic paths to get the roles that you want on guns. Think things like umbral engrams and the raid chest. Weapon crafting unlocks the freedom to choose all that and more. It gives us ultimate control over the guns. Now, this is a combat-focused crafting and progression system. That means the more you use these weapons, the more objectives you complete with them, the more you'll level them up, and the more powerful they grow over time. And at launch, here's the awesome thing. You'll be able to craft all Throne World weapons, new raid weapons, and the seasonal weapons. There's just a ton of stuff to do in this system. He and said the Witch raid. Queen is just the beginning of weapon crafting. We have plans to add 
more craftable weapons, both legacy and new, throughout the year. We've seen and we've talked about a lot of really cool features, but let's get right into the meat of it. Let's talk about the Witch Queen campaign. I love campaigns. They've always been a cornerstone of the Destiny experience. They're rich, deep stories interwoven with big combat sequences and memorable characters. They take us to remote worlds in our ever-changing universe. And so we're putting extra care into the campaign for the Witch Queen. We want you to feel those goosebumps when you step onto the throne world for the first time and come face to face with Hive Guardians. And every one of the missions has its oh. own unique fantasy. Like, what does it feel like to storm a castle or just go wrecked. straight to the depths of hell? If you like games with standalone campaigns like Doom, Titanfall 2, God of War, and Halo, then Slow the your Witch roll. Queen is for you. Slow your, no, you're, no, it's not. No, it's not. You're, mm -hmm. so, in that's too much to classic normal mode, Legendary is our tougher, aspirational version of the campaign where the enemies hit harder and respawning is heavily restricted. So every battle is a gut punch. Every boss is a worthy adversary. It's gonna hurt. You might tap out. But if you persist and you get to the end, your time will be well rewarded. Whether you want to play solo or with a fire team, the difficulty will scale based on how many people you bring. Before we go, one last trip down memory lane. I remember camping out the Predator for Destiny 1 because I just had to have the ghost. To me, it was like the symbol of destiny. Oh no. And if you care about that stuff like me, you're going to want to get your hands on the collector's edition because you're no. going to get a hive buddy to go up on the shelf with it. Oh no. No! No! No, I'm gonna want it! I'm gonna want it! Oh. Wow. Wow, that was so cool. Oh, I'm man. so I'm so excited for this one. And that's mm -hmm. not even everything that's in there, too. I know. Those are the hero where items. Do I, and where do I put my wallet? The best ones that we've ever done. Take it. The Take it. Collector's editions have always been Take my wallet. like this really perfect jumping point to enter the worlds that we build and actually lifting like in-world objects and putting them in players' hands is just, GG it's just wallet. a good feeling. Yep. We don't just put random items. Everything in there means something, and it helps push the narrative. And there might be some puzzles to unlock in there as well. So at this point, you can see Sabathun has been one of our greatest threats, operating behind the scenes for years. You may have heard of her brother, the Taken King, but Sabathun is the most dangerous being we've ever faced. She's cunning, elusive, she works in the shadows, so in a way, Sabathun is new to all of us. Exactly, and now it's time to finally see this legend reveal herself and change the Destiny universe forever. But when we talk about the overarching story of Destiny, we don't just mean the plot lines or characters that feature release to release. Narrative is a guiding force in Destiny, and we're calling on its rich Orcs history of world building, guy. bringing but that Sabbath to the Thune? forefront Woo. and growing it in a bold new direction. <laughs> so when you join the game today, you'll experience an immediate call to action alongside millions of your fellow guardians. During this past year, we watched the results of your actions play out across Destiny's seasonal releases. You've redeemed old foes, brought former enemies to the bargaining table, learned that there's always more than one side to every story, and built alliances no one ever thought possible. And on the largest scale, you'll experience a vast, living, interconnected world of stories that's striving to a greater end. We need you, Guardian. Me? You'll experience this alongside a massive community of Guardians, release after release, Together, this is our universe's cosmic purpose. This 10-year journey we've been on since Destiny 1, it's drawing to its dramatic conclusion. The light and darkness saga will end. But make no mistake, Destiny 2 will not. We're building not so much to an ending, but more to this transformative moment for Destiny 2's future. Last year, we announced The Witch Queen and the following expansion, Lightfall. And now we're excited to announce the release after Lightfall. The final oh. chapter in the Light and Darkness Saga, Destiny 2, The Final Shape. It's going to be one wild, continuous ride. Yes. It's a and circle. And that ride starts with Season of the Lost. Not only is it the prologue to the Witch Queen, it's your first opportunity to interact with Sabathun. But rather than spoil it for you, oh, it's why don't we take a look? We did triangles. We are to survive the coming storm. The tower and the dreaming oh, city man. must stand united. The queen armor's back. Saw that. We are surrounded. 
A ring of spears pointing inward from the edges of our system. Good boy. The Witch Queen is no less dangerous now than she has ever been. We must uncover whatever secrets she knows with the time that we have. Relight the pathways of the Ascendant Plane and guide my people back to me. Thank those moats! Oh, we get to become token! Yes! I'm okay with that. That's fine. I like that. Work in this plane, God. It was a silly name. It was a silly name. What is that? It's a trace rifle. A seize. Ah! That's cool. Ugh. For violence is needed. Oh boy, that looks. That looks broken. Yay! Crossplay! Aid the Queen, but which one? A stasis trace rifle, yeah. That looked really cool. Perhaps with them I can save us all. No, I don't trust Osiris. I do not trust him. That's today. Seasons have gone through massive transformations since Shadowkeep. We're dedicated to creating an evolving, interconnected world that puts your guardian at the center of the action. We're reaching the end of one journey and the beginning of another. The days of Destiny's biggest story moments happening in lore pages is long gone. I mean, Mara's return has been hinted at forever, and now it's happening in a season. One of the changes I'm most excited about are the updates to the light subclasses every season in year five of Destiny 2. We're adding every aspects season. and fragments similar to stasis. We'll be starting with the Void subclass update that goes live alongside the Witch Queen. But the Witch Queen is only the beginning of what's to come, and Season of the Lost is the prologue to that story. It starts off with Marasov's return to the Dreaming City, and with her return, all the Awoken technology comes alive. But the Hive God of War, Zivu Wrath, has reemerged and has Guardians and Mara in her sights. Guardians must forge a path through the Ascendant Plane to save Mars' lost coven of witches before Zivu Wrath can reach them. And to aid you in this task, you'll have the Wayfinder's Compass. The time is at hand. The beacons shine bright and the ley lines are set in place. It's an ancient awoken artifact that gives the wielder the power to uncover pathways, secrets, and treasures within the Ascendant Plane. Whoa. <laughs> There's a plethora of new weapons coming, including a suite Ooh. of legendary stasis guns that will stop your enemies cold. The armor makes you feel like you're a member of Queen Mars Court. And no season is complete without new exotics, and Season of Lost features one once intended for Aldrin. Wow, stasis trace rifle. Let's take a moment to talk about Trials. So Trials of uh -oh. Osiris is the end-game aspirational PvP activity and more popular than ever. Two of the biggest asks from our community have been adding anti-cheat and adding matchmaking. In Season of the Lost, we're doing both. We've partnered with BattleEye to soft launch the anti-cheat software when Trials goes live on September 10th. Also, you'll be able to matchmake with groups of players to form fire teams or solo queue by yourself. And we've remixed how rewards are distributed to give all players the opportunity to earn some of the best weapons and coolest armor in the game. That's right. We're shifting away from winning matches as a primary way to earn loot, and instead, winning individual rounds and completing matches will allow you to earn some rewards. But going flawless hasn't changed. So if you want to flex those PvP skills, the flawless chest will still be the only place to earn adept trials weapons and unique cosmetics. <laughs> We've removed trials. All right, to so the next chapter everyone. in Destiny begins right after this stream with Season of the Lost. Return yeah, I heard, to the Dreaming City I, like, with Mars Eye isn't really learn the, the mystic art of wayfinding. I'm so excited Crossplay is going live today. And today is your first opportunity to jump into Destiny with friends on any platform from all over the world playing together. Oh? Halo. Wow, 30 years. That's how old I am. I'm 30. Damn. Uh. 
Oh. Don't you take me down this this nostalgia trip right here. on taking care of its employees and, and their significant others and their communities and those who are in need. It's pretty devastating as we look at the racism in America and uh, our intention is to do better and to leave the world in a better place. We want to be a part of that social change. Fuck racism. We don't just stop with the games that we make, but we really utilize the successes that we've seen to be able to give back in an even greater capacity that spans beyond uh, just the gaming industry. Thank you, Foundation. Thank you. Pressing button. We're live! <laughs> oh my gosh. This adventure has begun. Deej! Oh, I miss him. Oh, I miss him. He was a perfect hype man. God, remember this? Midnight launches? This game is gonna single-handedly destroy my social life, and I can't wait. Friends! All right, Guardian. Time to kick him where it hurts. Oh, Cade! Oh! I miss him! Oh! This is going to hurt. <sighs> Damn, this... This is... This is hurting me. Oh, you... I'm in there somewhere, maybe. Probably not. Not there, but. Oh. Wow. This is great. Anyone want a hug? Hugs? No? Oh, I miss no him hugs. so much, man. I miss him so much. Ow. Oh, I did not need that. Oh, I did not need that. How do you follow that? Wow. How do you? 30 years, and I, I, I remember when Halo first launched, and my friends and I completed the entire campaign in a single epic play session, and as the credits rolled, I knew that, that Bungie had transformed console gaming forever, and that, that I would be a lifelong fan. Yeah, it changed how we played games, too. I remember getting together with friends for Halo weekend LAN parties. We had so much fun. And 30 years of Bungie games is something special. It's something worth celebrating yes. together. So we're gonna have a party in Destiny 2. <laughs> Starting this December, we are launching the Bungie 30th Anniversary Celebration in Destiny 2. Free for all players, the 30th Anniversary Celebration will offer a new six-player matchmade activity, secrets to unravel, and rewards that commemorate our long and storied history together. And that's oh. just the beginning. In okay. addition to the free event, players can also purchase the Bungie 30th Anniversary Pack that includes a new treasure-themed three-player dungeon set on the Cosmodrome within the fabled Loot Cave. Players will plunder its depths to discover an exciting new thorn inspired armor set and fan-favorite Destiny 1 weapons like Isa Luna and Thousand Yard Stare. It even has the Claymore Sword from Myth. Purchasing the pack unlocks a range of awesome bungee-themed armor ornaments yeah, and cosmetics is... to collect, including ornament sets inspired by the Bungie 30th Anniversary Celebration wow. and Marathon. But They're the dungeon holds dungeon one more secret. The crown the jewel pack? of its weaponry is a Destiny 1 classic. Galahorn is making its long-awaited debut I in knew Destiny it! 2. I got him knew it! We're gonna take its iconic status to the next level. Galley has been carefully updated. Give me my Galley! Give me my so, Galley! This December, join your friends and collect exclusive rewards <gasps> during the Bungie 30th anniversary <gasps> celebration. But the party isn't only happening in Destiny 2. We've partnered with Nerf Limited to create a functional dart firing Galahorn. We'll have more on that soon. 
And that's Damn not all. It. Here's a look at some of the incredible loot we've made over the years and a sneak peek of what's coming up. I already have a Gallahorn. I don't need another one. Oh my God. A wow, dart man. firing. Yeah, we're celebrating right? Bungie's 30th anniversary. 30 years. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, look, think of all the games and products that have come out over these and years. And the yes, merchandise. Operation Desert Storm, Pathways into Darkness, Marathon, Myth, Oni, Halo, and Destiny. Seven years of Destiny. It's an amazing journey. So excited, you know, we have a lot of really cool stuff coming up and a lot of other things in the works, of course, as always. But yeah. I mean, what do we have? We have the fallen captain statue, which is incredible. And then we have the helmet, the Celestial the Knight Celestial helmet. Celestial Knight so cool. helmet. Yeah. And uh, my Can favorite, you wear it? the Arcadia jump ship. Yeah, I get goosebumps just thinking about that. You know, it really gives me that nostalgia from Destiny 1. And so I think it's a great way that we're going to celebrate not only Bungie's 30 year heritage, but the seven year heritage of Destiny. Yeah. And it definitely gives you the feels. All the guns. Oh. All right, calm down, dubstep. Calm down. Shoes! <laughs> Thank you for being on this journey with us. Whether it started this year or 30 years ago. We've just started talking about the Witch Queen today. You've got our first peek at weapon crafting, our definitively Destiny campaign, the Glaive, and a year full of updates to all our light-based subclasses. All of this and more is coming alongside Savathun's long-awaited arrival front and center to the Destiny universe. The Witch Queen marks an acceleration in our story heading toward the conclusion of the Light and Dark Saga, and we're so excited for everyone to join us on this epic adventure in the Witch Queen, Lightfall, the final shape, and beyond. And the Witch Queen's gonna kick off another amazing year of Destiny with four great seasons packed with all of the narrative events and rewards that you've come to expect from us. But there's even more coming next year than just our new seasons. Yeah. The deluxe edition of the Witch Queen will also include two brand new dungeons to be released in 2022. And we're also gonna be remastering another classic Destiny 1 raid and releasing it free for all players. This means going forward, starting this December with our 30th anniversary event, there will be a new piece of raid oh, yeah, I have the content Bungie in the store game every three months. I'm in the queue. In 2022, we will also be adding legacy rotations for raids and dungeons, meaning every week there will be new ways to earn rewards in both the latest and greatest content and raids and dungeons from the past. If you love amazing in-game content, we want to prove that no other game offers more quality and more variety than Destiny 2. But hold on. We hope you said that, that you're locking dungeons the behind the Deluxe 2. Edition? Witch Queen pre-orders are available wherever you play Destiny. Crossplay is live on all devices. And Season of the Lost kicks off today. See you in-game. Hold the phone. Truth is a funny thing. Who decides what is true? Tell me, little light. What is your truth now? Bungie actually released how tall she is. She's the like 20 feet. 20 feet, no 20 feet tall. Now she She's huge. Been. She's no Lady D. As far as looks, but Prepare still, for what is inevitably to come. big lady. Some content shown requires season path or other purchase. No kidding. Mm. I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh. Is it it? Is that it? I don't know if that's it. Let me see. How's the, how's the chat looking? Oh, we got some si some subs going. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> I mean, yep. Dang, look at that person! Gifting a bunch of subs. 
<clears throat> Ooh boy. Ooh boy. I feel like, yeah, it's probably just outro music now. You're right, you're right. Well! That's... That was pretty good! I am absolutely... Like, I'm hyped for the next... All the new stuff. I'm a little... I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about all the stuff that's locked behind a paywall. Like, the dungeons and a lot of the weapons and stuff locked behind deluxe editions? Deluxe editions? Very, very, a very bold asterisk of free to play. I mean, the only thing that's gonna be really free with the new stuff is the legacy raid. And who knows what legacy raid it's gonna actually end up being. The legacy raid could end up being Crota, which is just in itself a, like a little dungeon. I'm waiting for the, the patch notes to drop, so this way we can go over those. Those haven't dropped yet. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, the, the shop doesn't go up for another 30 minutes. It looks like, yeah. When we open, you'll be assigned a random place in line alongside everyone else who arrives before the bungee store opens today. And there's, there it is. That's the end. That's it. That's it. They're done. You're an R6 god, Gummy Fox? Like Rainbow Six God? Rainbow Six? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs>